Hi, I'm Adam Summer. You're listening to the Yershami Talk podcast with the support of the Yeshivat Debar Yushalayim in Harnof, Jerusalem. This is Shias, Chapter 2, Halacha 6. Now, a couple of things that have been coming up in the chapter, okay? We have this case about when we're using something for seed and when we're using something for food, for the greens or for the vegetable. And one of the things to keep in mind is when you're using something for the seed, it's not edible. That's not being grown for human consumption. That's being grown for a future food crop, but that's not being grown to put on your table. So when you're thinking about these halahot, one of the things to keep in mind is you should think about the crop that's being used for seed as growing something that's not for human consumption. That's part of the idea on the intention. And, you know, that's going to be like growing uh, some other crop, like, um, you know, whether it's going to be for um, wood or um, dyes, things like that. Now, dyes do have shvius sanctity, and so does as we were seeing in uh, chapter 2, Halakha 5, so does um, seed crop if it's grown at the wrong time. If you're growing it and you're planting it and it takes root in the seventh year and then you're not going to harvest it until the eighth year, it all goes by when it takes root. So that would have Shvius sanctity. But again, this is not being used for human consumption. So the Halakha is going to be a little bit different on when it takes root. Now, Generally speaking, for a vegetable, okay, a vegetable is going to be the year in which it's picked. And we covered this also in chapter 2, Halakha 5. Part of the idea about the vegetable is does the, the majority of the water that is being used to sustain this vegetable, well, which year does that come in? Again, one of the themes that comes out throughout the Shas is going to be where is this plant getting nutrition from? When is it getting nutrition? So if the majority of the vegetable is going, it's going to be picked and the majority of sustaining it for that vegetable to make sure it gets to that point of where it's picked is occurring um, in you know, let's say the eighth year, then it's going to be eighth year produce. Why? Because if you stop watering most vegetables, they just die right away. You can't ever pick them because after a few days of not watering your vegetables, they all perish. So you need to have constant watering on most vegetables. For instance, if you're trying to grow lettuce or you're trying to grow... Um, some sort of uh, gentle herbs like uh, sage or basil, uh, they're just not going to last long if you don't water them constantly. Same with parsley, same with kuzbara, which is coriander. Coriander uh, is very gentle and dies very quickly without proper care. Very, very gentle herb. Um, so the coming Mishnah is going to deal with other kind of plants that don't need as much water that are vegetables. So like an onion, right? Onions can do very well without constant water. An onion is not going to be like kuzbara. And both are vegetables. Both have the halachic status of vegetables. But an onion is a bulb and it lives in the ground. So does a beet. And they can do very well, same with potatoes, without a lot of watering. They don't need constant watering. And so too, as we were seeing, the Egyptian bean is going to be a little bit different. And one of the statuses of the Egyptian bean is it doesn't need constant watering as well. So vegetables are normally, normally going to be classified according to the year they're picked, okay, just to sum that up. But... Now we're going to get into a case about the watering of the crop and the pattern of watering the crop because, again, some vegetables do not require constant watering. Some do. And the, the case here 
is going to be that, um, you know, in this case where you have something like an onion, a potato that you're growing, carrots, uh, fennel, by the way, doesn't need a lot of water. It's also a bulb in the ground. Doesn't need constant watering. And by the way, for fennel, you can go for a walk in the Jerusalem forest and you'll see wild fennel growing all year long, even though uh, it hasn't rained in a long period of time because it's a bulb that sits in the ground. If you've watered it a bit, it'll do just fine. But you can't do that with a lot of other vegetables. So again, the Gemara is going to be and the mission is going to be uh, creating two categories of vegetables. And you're going to have this produce that is not going to be classified by the year in which it's picked, but the year it takes root. So like, for instance, in the case of a potato, an onion, these bulbs of fennel, um, these don't need constant watering, and you're not going to classify them in the year it's picked. You're going to classify them in the year it takes root. Why? Because um, it doesn't need watering all the time. Now, if you had a plant that you were watering all the time, then, again, like kuzbara, like the coriander, well, then that's going to be the year it's picked because most of the sustenance for it's going to be coming uh, in the year it's picked. If you stop watering it for a few days, it'll just die. Not so with a potato. Not so with a sterile onion. Not so with an onion. So the Mishnah starts off with this other category. Okay, we're going to create this other category for plants that does not require constant watering that's going to be used or going to be looked at in terms of, uh, you know, again, it has to not have constant watering, not just that the nature isn't that it's constantly watered, but also that you're not actively uh, watering it all the time. So the this rule is going to get detailed in the Mishnah. It says sterile onions and Egyptian beans from which one watered, withheld water 30 days before Rosh Hashanah are tithed according to the past year and are permitted in Shvias. Now, what are sterile onions? Sterile onions are going to be produce, says the Pnei Moshe, that is only used for um, onion and not for seed. Um, normally for an onion plant, what will happen is they, and they did used to grow fields of onions for seed, as you can see in Masechet Peya, where they would, uh, they would put the onions in, they would grow it. It creates these long stalks that come out of the ground with a nice, beautiful purple flower. And that beautiful purple flower will get pollinated by bees. And then what will happen is it will produce seed and the farmers will come and collect the seed. They'll have lots of onion seeds and they'll be able to plant future crops of onions with the seeds. But this is a case where they're planting uh, sterile onions. These are onions that are not going to be used for seed at all. They're going to be using only for food crops. It's only going to be used as a vegetable. And the Rashi in uh, the commentary in Rosh Hashanah 14a, Rambam also holds this as well, is that uh, they said that the growers of these onions would crush the seed head in the early stages, and that would enhance the development of the onions themselves. In other words, all the energy of the plant would not go, go into producing seeds. It would go into producing a bigger bulb, which would mean more vegetable matter for your dinner table. So sterile onions, Egyptian beans from which one withheld water 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, are tied according to the past year and permitted in Shvias. In other words, it is going to have this designation of coming in the uh, in the sixth year. Now, vegetables again are normally going to be in the year where they're picked, but those are only for vegetables that require watering all the time. And that, by the way, is the norm for vegetables. Okay, most vegetables need watering all the time, but onions and beets and potatoes, and, and carrots, and fennel, that does not need watering. And certainly Egyptian beans do not need watering all the time, they're saying. So it has to be excluded from this category because it doesn't need constant watering. And uh, in fact, when growing a bed of potatoes, if you grow it 
and you're going to water it constantly, you're going to end up creating a lot of rot in the potatoes. It's not, it's not going to be good for your crop. So the mission is trying to teach that, you know, if water is going to be withheld from sterile onions and Egyptian beans for 30 days leading up to Rosh Hashanah, they're going to be treated as vegetables that do not require constant watering. In other words, it's going to change the category. So what would happen is, says the Hazanish, is that they're going to be assigned to the year before Rosh Hashanah. Now, uh, the idea here with the Egyptian bean is that the Mishnah is referring specifically to cases where it's going to be planted for its greens. It's not going to be planted for its seeds. We already had a Mishnah saying that if these Egyptian beans are planted for the seed, then it's going to be in the year it takes root before Rosh Hashanah. So there's no need to talk about it. This is talking about a new category, a new case, where it's being used for the vegetable. Now, ordinarily, produce that's going to be, um, you know, ordinarily produce for food is going to be in the year it's picked. Okay? Now, what's happening here is it's suggesting that you have this Egyptian bean that's being used for food and they're going to not water it constantly. It's going to take hold of this rule and then what's going to happen is uh, it's going to it's going to change the year in which it's going to be for tithes as well as for uh, consumption. In other words, it's not going to have the Shvi'as sanctity. Now, one of the ideas here is that if you are watering this bean uh, constantly, then you would effectively be watering it and sustaining it for the Shvi'as year, and that's going to give it the sanctity uh, because of, because you're going to be picking it for greens. This is introducing a new rule that, you know, specifically speaking, that you're you're treating these in a different way, even though it's going to be used for greens. You're not giving it constant water. So again, most of the nutrition for this. And the sustenance, it's going to be actually in the earlier year, and it's going to be counted as um, a, a sixth year crop, and that you're going to be allowed to uh, take it in Shvias because it doesn't have Shvias sanctity. Because again, it's going to be based on when it takes root, and it's going to fall into this other category. So this rule is going to apply specifically to sterile onions, Egyptian beans, and you know it's going to come up why it would be a common practice to withhold the last watering before the completion. And why would they be doing that? They wanted it to harden up. And they would do that also for, um, you know, some other vegetables as well. Uh, you know, again, this would also be the case for potatoes, uh, which did not exist in the time of the Gemara in Eretz Yisrael. That's a new world uh, crop. But again, what this is doing is this is trying to say that, you know, hey, if we had this and it's going to be picked after Rosh Hashanah, uh, you know, it's still going to be it's still going to be product of the year before. And so, um, you know, if it were a case where, you know, it's growing in the sixth year and it wasn't watered 30 days before Shvias, again, with the idea to harden up the fruit, harden up the beans. Um, they're not going to have the status of the Shvi'as produce. That's going to be the idea. The Gemara, the Mishnah, I'm sorry, is going to continue and say, but if one did not withhold water from 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, they are forbidden in Shvi'as and they are tithed according to the coming year. So the idea here, according to the Rosh, is that, you know, in cases where you know, the year in which they were picked is going to be Shvias, they're going to be forbidden for consumption of the, the rabbinic ban on Shifakim. And the Rosh is holding the opinion that the produce of the plants that began growing before Shvias um, could be exempt from Shifakim. So accordingly, the onions and the beans would be permitted for consumption. And the Mishnah's Description of them as forbidden means only that their consumption is regulated by the constraints inherent 
in uh, their sacred Shvius uh, status. Now, again, if one is watering the plant continually, they're going to be governed by the normal rules for vegetables, and they're going to be classified according to the year in which they're picked. So this is a case where if you're watering it continuously, and in this case from 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, these other kinds of vegetables like onions, potatoes, um, bulbs of uh, fennel, beets, and the Egyptian bean, they're going to be forbidden in Shvius, and they're going to be tithed according to the coming year. In other words, you're going to treat them like a uh, regular vegetable. And when it says, and they are tithed according to the coming year, again, in the Mishnah, what has been happening is they're, they're talking about it in two different things. The and is really talking about two different cases there. One is talking about in terms of Shvius, because that has sanctity. The other is talking about which year you are tithing it because you can be setting this up where um, in some years it could be Miser Shani. And if you did it in a certain other way where you were watering it con constantly and it went into the next year and that next year happened to be where you'd be giving Miser Ani instead of Miser Shani, then it's going to be tithed as Miser Ani, not Miser Shani. So this and here in the Mishnah is talking about the two cases. You have over here the, the conversation about when it is for Shvias and which year it's going to be for uh, tithing in, in other cases that um, it's going to be just a, a regular year. So it's going to determine uh, both of them. And uh, the cases in which the crops are going to be from rainwater, a rainwatered field. This is the Mishnah now. Mishnah is saying in cases where the crop is going to be from a rainwatered field, and that's going to be one that has no irrigation system. It's just going to be where you're relying on the rainfall alone. Now, there's two kinds of fields. We covered this before. There's a kind of field where you're only relying on rainwater to cover things, and things generally don't grow as well. And then you're dealing with other kinds of systems where you'll create pits in the field, it'll collect rainwater, and then you'll use that and, and spread it out across the plants, and you'll use a hoe to try to work in the moisture into the soil. And it's saying that you know, in these cases where you know, the crops are from a rainwatered field, and that's going to be one that doesn't have any irrigation system in it at all. Uh, this rule applies only when one withheld water from uh, from them for two periods. These are the words of Rabbi Meir, but the sages say only if the water is withheld from three periods are these crops going to be assigned to the previous year. So rainwater fields going to be different from a field that does have an irrigation system. And... Um, the idea here is that uh, the growing is going to be different. And, you know, you might have a field that's actually going to be at the bottom of a valley. And what will happen with a field that's in a valley is that it's going to have its moisture, um, it's going to retain its moisture uh, very well. And what will happen is that you're not going to need an irrigation system. So in this kind of field, a vegetable doesn't need this extra kind of watering because it's deeper, it's cooler in a valley, and it will hold the ground will hold on to the rainwater for longer in the season. And so, the idea here, uh, according to these you know periods, these two periods, is going to be where he's refraining from watering them from the vegetables for two of the customary intervals between waters. That's going to be the span of time where it's going to be longer than 30 days in connection to an irrigated field. In an irrigated field, it's going to be 30 days before. In the terms of a rain, uh, one that relies on rainfall, it's going to be longer. So in this kind of field, where it's maybe like at the bottom of a valley, for example, 
this kind of field is going to be moist already. So vegetables planted there are not going to need uh, watering as much as they do somewhere in a higher, drier climate. And so what Rabbi Mayer is saying is that, you know, only if two waterings are going to be withheld from these onions and beans, are they going to fall in the category of vegetables that do not require constant watering. And therefore, if two waterings were skipped before Rosh Hashanah, they are classified according to the past year. Otherwise, they're going to be classified according to the coming year. And the, the sages are going to say that it's actually going to be three periods where uh, you're withholding water. Okay, so we're going to get into this. So the Mishnah was talking about uh, the term of sterile onions, and the Gemara is now going to define the term. And the Gemara asks and says, what are sterile onions? And it says that they are those village-grown onions that do not produce seed. In other words, they are only used for the vegetable. You're not holding them to use it for any kind of seed crop at all. And in fact, as the Rashi is pointing out, they might actually purposefully damage the bulb so that um, when the this this sprout comes out, uh, they they cut it so that it doesn't come and and generate a a flower and take a start to make seed. As soon as this sprout comes out, they cut it very quickly, and that way they cut off the ability for the onion to produce seed. And instead. They're saying that it takes all the energy and puts it back into the bulb to develop the bulb. Why would the plant do that? Because onions can stay in the ground and produce for many, many seasons. So the plant is getting the signal that, oh, well, this year I can't make seed for whatever reason, and I'll just do it again next year. So meanwhile, I'll just take all my energy and make myself bigger, and I'll make seed next year. So anyway, the Mishnah is saying that Sterile onions and Egyptian beans from which one withheld water 30 days before Rosh Hashanah are tithed according to the past year and are permitted in Shvias. And the Gemara is going to explain the reasoning behind this law. Rabbi Mana says, once one has withheld water from them uh, 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, they become like the products of a rain-watered field, such as legumes, and that is going to be attributed to the previous year. Again, this is the logic for why this is, okay? It's very important, and the Rosh is going to explain this, okay? Rosh is going to say like this about this, about this commentary. It's going to say that withholding water from sterile onions and Egyptian beans for 30 days puts them in the same category as grains and legumes, which are sustained exclusively by rainwater, and since the defining characteristic of vegetables is that they are brought to maturity by being irrigated, these crops are no longer included in that category, and they are therefore assigned to the previous year from the year in which they are picked. That's going to be the idea. Now, um, some of the other uh, uh, commentary about this is going to be where um, related to uh, Bavli Rosh Hashanah 14a. And uh, the Roshonim there are going to explain that according to Rabbi Yosei Haglili, uh, that the wa withholding of water from these crops for Rosh Hashanah assures that they will have grown only from last year's water, and that would cause them to be assigned to the previous year. So again, you know, it's going to be where is the nutrition or the sustenance coming from? And so basically what this is saying is that, you know, most of this water is going to be from the previous year, and that's going to help determine it. Now, uh, we're going to go on to uh, this establishment that the sterile onions and Egyptian beans are going to be treated as legumes when water is going to be withheld from them for 30 days. And the Gemara is going to look at this rule, and Rabbi Yonah asks and says, when one withholds water from sterile onions or Egyptian beans for 30 days, does it become like a legume retroactively? 
from the beginning of the 30 days or only from now and onward? Well, that's a good question. So the Gemara is going to clarify uh, where this, you know, about this inquiry. And it's going to say what practical difference emerges between these two possibilities. In other words, you know, this question is related to produce that was picked in the midst of the 30-day period before Rosh Hashanah, but as far as the tithing year is concerned, there's no difference at all whether it is considered a vegetable or a legume, for either way it will be assigned to the previous year. So what is the consequence of the inquiry? So the difference lies in a case where one collected some of the produce during the 30-day period in which the water uh, the watering was withheld, and he collected the rest of the produce after this 30-day period has already passed. And the Gemara says that if you will say that it becomes like a legume retroactively, then he may separate miser from one group of produce on behalf of another. And since they both, both share the same classification as legumes, that's going to be why, because they both have the same classification as legumes. The Gemara says, but if you will say that it becomes like a legume only from now and onward, then he may not separate Miser from one group of produce on behalf of the other. Why? Because uh, those in the first group are still considered a vegetable, and those in the second group would be considered the status of a legume. And so regarding these two separate kinds of produce, one may not be tithed on another, but this question is unresolved. And then it goes on to Halakha 7. But one of the key ideas here to think about is when is the watering taking place? You have two different kinds of fields. You have one that has regular irrigation. You have one kind of field that has rainwater irrigation, and the rainwater irrigation field might be in the valley and it will uh, be treated differently based on these other kinds of less fragile crops like uh, onions. Anyway, have a great day.